Hey YouTubers and subscribers, hey check this out. In today's episode I'm going to convert this old 1937 Plymouth Dodge Chrysler radio and speaker to Bluetooth. I'll show you everything you need to know to convert this, repurpose it, and uh, modernize it so it's functional again today. Thanks. Okay, here's the model that I ordered for the Bluetooth amplifier board. It's ZK-502L off of Amazon. It also states in the description 5 to 24 volts. Uh, again, I'll show you how it will work on 6 volts, no problem. Uh, if you have a 12 volt car, uh, that's even better. It'll supply more voltage and then you can use more powerful speakers if you'd like. With this installation, I decided to use the Busman Easy ID ATM fuse panel. This particular one has LEDs, so when a fuse blows, you have uh, an indication of which one it is. Along with, uh, here's a picture of the particular ATM 5 amp fuses I used, little mini fuses, came in handy. And then here's a picture of some of the connectors I used, some of the wires. Uh, of course, yours will be dependent on how you install yours. Okay, here's the box. That it came in. There's the part number down here. The model number. All right, let's flip it around. Let's crack it open and see what's in the box. Of course, here it is. All right, of course, you got the volume knob. You got your power connector here. We'll show you more in detail. This is where that power connector goes in, where you supply voltage. Here's where your speakers go, right in here. Also in the package, you get the plate that covers it, kind of tells you where everything is. Two speakers, connections, of course the power I just talked about, volume, and then there's Bluetooth here as well. Comes with a handy dandy screwdriver in case you didn't have one. Comes with the standoffs and the screws. Very nice. And then also are the instructions. Here it is here, tell you, telling you what's in the package, how to choose a power supply, that sort of thing. Uh, we'll go on to the details shortly. Okay, thought I'd show you this. This is very important right here. This is Dear Friend. Hey, I, I didn't know we were friends, but it says we are. That's awesome. Kind of go uh, through if you're satisfied or not satisfied. Uh, we wish you health and happiness. Excellent. Well, thank you. Same to you. Okay, what I want to focus on in this step right here is connect speakers to the power amplifier board correctly. Pay attention. Positive and negative posts correctly. Uh, of course, connect the power supply. Turn on the Bluetooth in phone and select that device and go from there. Module will be playing music after you select music on the phone and go from there. So let's, uh, let's wire it up. I know it does say recommended power supply down here of 8 to 20 volts. Uh, with this particular car, of course, it's still 6 volts, but uh, it's got about 6.4 on my battery. So it should be enough. Let's see. Okay, let's open this up. But before I do that, I got to put on these really cool gloves. Check these things out. Yeah, these are static resistive conductive gloves for working on circuit boards so for me i have a degree in electronics believe it or not even though i turn a lot of wrenches um, i like to be on the safe side when i handle electronics uh, and these gloves will certainly help with that okay so i have that out i'm going to tip it upside down then i'm going to take out the power connector i'm going to have to clean up these leads a little bit here and uh, make them a little bigger so I can connect to them. So let me do that. Okay, there it is installed. Of course, there's no instructions that tell you about that, but uh, that's okay. Figured it out. There we are. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to connect a speaker, speaker wires. I'll show you that. And then also let's plug in the power connector here. I think that goes in right in here. All right. So let me uh, hook up some wires. 
Okay, what I've done is connected my speaker wire. This goes all the way over to my speaker right here. I'll, uh, I'll get some voltage to this guy. Okay, now I apply my 6 volts. I have a 6 volt battery connected here. Of course, it's connected here. And then what I need to do is connect to my Wi-Fi and look for what it says here in the instructions. Select device this, E-T-W-U-Z-H-I. So let me take a look. Okay, now what you'll see on your cell phone when you look in your Bluetooth list is, of course, the new listing for the Bluetooth. And then it'll ask you if you want to pair it, and you're going to say OK. And then another screen is going to appear connected to audio if everything is operating correctly. OK, I've added two small speakers uh, for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'll apply power now to the amplifier, and you can hear some of the tones. All right, so now let me apply some music. Sounds pretty good. Okay, now that we have the Bluetooth amplifier working and set up and tested, now we go on to the actual radio speaker itself. Uh, what I've done already is taken the screws out of here already. Uh, I'm going to show you what's inside. Now I've already disconnected this speaker wire and it happens to have four wires on it. Well, that's because it has two basic speakers. You have one big main speaker here and then you have uh, inside there, there's two other small wires in here um, that actually run to a smaller speaker inside. Uh, very powerful. You can see how big this magnet is. Uh, this particular uh, Bluetooth amplifier is not going to be able to power this. It's just it's just too big of a uh, of a speaker to run. So uh, let me just temporarily set that aside, and I want to talk about the actual radio itself. So yeah, it's, this is original. It's all complete. Uh, I've already gone through it, and it turns out that uh, initially I thought it was the uh, power supply uh, vacuum tube is what I'm trying to say. I ordered one online. I actually found one uh, that was uh, new old stock and I replaced it. Uh, here's the old one. Uh, I was able to get more of the tubes to light up, but I did some more checking too on a schematic and uh, the electronic guys will understand that on the power supply side, uh, it's got, it uses a half wave uh, rectifier type circuit. Uh, many of the, uh, also the capacitors inside, again, are all dried up. Um, so right now, uh, this is deemed uh, unrepairable other than if I were to replace all the tubes, go in and replace all of the capacitors. So right now, I don't think it's going to be worth the trouble. Also, it's been through a lot with all of the scratches and dents on it. Uh, that might find some other issues too with connection issues. So uh, so right now, that's why I'm converting this particular one and not trying to repair it. All right, so I'm going to just set this aside for now. It's very heavy. Now, what I may do, actually, before I go too far, I may remove this whole entire inside uh, uh, chassis inside and then put it in a safe place. So if I ever get back to it again and, and find some better components or another one I can use for parts, uh, at least I'll have it available. I don't want to destroy anything on here. It is original. It is complete. Um, so let's uh, again go back to setting this to this side here. Let's go back to the speaker itself. Okay, here's a better look at the speaker. Uh, what I plan on doing now, uh, because I know this speaker is just too big, again, set it aside uh, for future use uh, and don't damage anything. Uh, but here's a good opportunity to remove it and then install a fresh speaker in here that's compatible with the Bluetooth amplifier. So that's what I'm going to do next. Remove this carefully. Keep all the hardware. Uh, I might be able to use some of the cardboard as a template. Uh, let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, I've removed all of the hardware. Pull it up carefully. Take a look. There we are. 
pretty good shape. Most of the foam is gone there, some of that felt. Uh, but there it is. Then there's a smaller cone speaker inside there. Okay, so I measured this one. This one happens to be about four and a half ohms. And uh, so here's some more back here. So this must hold the grill on. Uh, of course, I will remove some of this and use it as a template. So uh, this is the part where you would have to start thinking about what to do with yours in particular. If you have a similar box, uh, can you find a big speaker that would fit in here? Uh, make a new mounting bracket, that sort of thing. Uh, for me, I plan on putting those two small ones in here. Use both channels. Uh, another source of speakers are at uh, St. Vinny's, uh, St. Vincent de Paul, uh, Goodwill. Oh, they usually have computer speakers up all over the place on different shelves um, in their electronics department. So another good source for uh, good cheap um, speakers. So let me take this apart here and... Uh, go from there. Okay, here's the speakers I installed. Use a couple of zip ties to uh, secure them to the existing mounting studs. I also included a mounting um, tie down here uh, to hold it in place during uh, transit, of course. Uh, so we're all ready to go. Of course, you can use uh, different speakers or one speaker if you'd like, whatever it takes to uh, to make it work. Okay, before I go on with the installation, I wanted to show you a simple schematic that I drew up to show how I wired this particular configuration up. Over here we have the six volt battery. In my case, it's a positive ground to the chassis. If yours is negative ground, just switch these around, that's okay. So here we have six volts going up to the ignition switch. Uh, and from the ignition switch, I was able to find a location uh, that had the six volts when you turn the switch on. Of course, when you turn the switch off, it'll remove power uh, to the Bluetooth amp. So from there, we run into the fuse block here, which I added for convenience. Uh, we have the six volts running through a five amp fuse, the ATM style, which I showed earlier. Again, the two wires that go in to power the Bluetooth are here, chassis ground, and again, the negative going here. And then the other part of the Bluetooth amp, we have speakers. You could use one, or in this case, I use two right here. And those are labeled on the Bluetooth amp, how to wire those up. So again, I hope this helps you uh, with the configuration of your choosing what works best for you. But this should give you an idea of how I put this together and uh, the use of the fuse block. Okay, I've installed the system into the car. Take a look here first. Here is the speaker and radio box. I was able to mount that into its original location. Yes, it's mounted underneath the dash. There's a screw down there. And then there's a couple of hooks behind there uh, that connect this to a bracket up there. So uh, let's continue on here. I'm gonna crawl under the car here. So bear with me as I bounce around a little bit. Okay, I'm under the dash now. Here's the final installation. Bear with me as I move around a little bit to get a better a uh, shot of the installation itself. There's the fuse block, uh, which I talked about uh, earlier. I used the 5 amp fuses. They're the ATM type. Uh, the silver can back there is the flasher unit uh, for the turn signals. Ran the wires through here and along in here. And then way back over here, under the dash here, you can barely see it, uh, where that white knob is connected to. That is where the Bluetooth uh, amplifier board is. I uh, installed it there. There was an existing hole and I was able to put the nut and uh, onto it and mount it on there. And so now it's mounted underneath the dash and within reach. Let me get back in position here. Uh, as you can see there's the knob. Um, I can reach right for it. Adjust my volume accordingly. No problem. It's really nice. Uh, also note that I did supply power to the Bluetooth amplifier board via the switch. So make sure you understand and realize where your six volts is located uh, on the switch. So right now, if I turn it on, it doesn't work at all. Um, I'll need to turn it on. Now I have six volts to it and then I'll turn it on. 
and you can hear it fire up. So let me uh, turn on some music here for you and see how it sounds. All right. Sounds pretty good. I call that success.